Hey guys, this is Byron Naranje, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the Odyssey Thunderbolt cranks as well as just a, a installation. So if you're wondering how you're going to put it on your bike, if you're thinking about buying them or something like that, this will show you kind of how, or at least on my bike, and I'll kind of put in some little things that tell you how it's going to be if you have a different bike. But I'm going to go ahead and do it right now and I'll show you the cranks. So let's go over to the bike. I got my bike here, ready to be suited up with some new crank because my cranks are pretty crappy. They're just my original Haro cranks and they're like, you know, three piece cranks with the pinch bolts. Um, they're all right, I mean, they've lasted me a while now, um, but I don't think they're doing too good. I think eventually they're gonna give out they're getting pretty rusted up as well as my bottom bracket I think needs to be changed because it's starting to get a little poppy here and there so I got a new bottom bracket with my cranks so that'll probably help but um, yeah so here are the cranks over here got to come in this kind of box when you get them most likely and this right here this is actually just my driver I need a new driver for my um, rear hub so because it's uh all sticky and like the springs are all worn out and stuff so I had to get a new one so that's what this is right there if I could focus on it that'd be great or not there we go yeah so that's what this is those little springs like they got worn out so these things are sticking down so I got this new one so that'll help a lot too with my bike's uh, performance and sounding better because I hate when my bike sounds like crap anyway so these are the Odyssey Thunderbolt cranks. Um, I got them on Amazon for like 178 something. So not too bad, and it comes with the bottom bracket. You can get it without the bottom bracket, but I need a new bottom bracket, so I was like, oh, I'll just get that. And if I could open it with one hand, that'd be great. Oh, why not? Okay, hold on. All right. So this is what it'll look like. Comes with your other crank. This crank, it's a two-piece crank system, so two pieces, as you can see. And um, I like this one because I was looking at a lot of other cranks, like the Shadow Killer cranks and stuff. But this one's just so simple. Like, I watched a lot of reviews, and this is so simple because it's only two pieces. You put it together, and you only tighten it with this side right here. A bolt goes through here, on uh, right here. And you just tighten it to there, and or, or like that, actually but and then you're done so you know you just got to put the sprocket on and everything and the spacers but that comes with everything in here so here's the bottom bracket if you get the bottom bracket it comes with the two bearings and this little thing i'll show you what that is in a little bit and here's your bolt to tighten this part in to there and uh here's all your parts you get all these spacers with some uh, bike grease in there and uh, there's your bolt for your sprocket um, this is the bottom bracket a little piece in the middle and there's a dust cover for it um, and some more spacers so you got that and then you get this which is awesome I never knew they would do this but it makes it a lot easier because I was gonna watch I mean, I did watch YouTube videos before I even got the cranks, but um, I was going to watch more to like see how to install it. But they actually give you a pretty detailed list on how to install it right here when you get them. So that's pretty cool too. And the, also, the awesome thing is about these cranks is um, the fact that they're 41 thermal chromoly. And their 41 thermal stuff is all lifetime warranty. Or at least I believe most of their 41 thermal stuff is. So, um, you just fill this out and mail it in, or you can go on the website, it says in there, and then you just, uh, submit your form, and then you have a lifetime guarantee for, like, if they break or anything. Not like, of course, if you just, like, you know, they rust or something like that. There's, like, certain things that apply to the warranty, but if you actually break them somehow, or they break, um, they will replace it for free brand new one so that's pretty cool and you know for that price that's pretty good because most of the other cranks are around the same price and 
um, that you don't get that. So it's pretty good. And uh, you know what they look like? They have that Odyssey Thunderbolt. I got the 170 millimeters because I run a 175 right now, and I like the feeling. And I didn't want to go down too much to the 165, so I just went with that. But it looked pretty cool. I just went with the black too because I feel like I have a lot of chrome on my bike as you can see chrome forks chrome bars cr kind of the chrome uh, stem chrome back wheel uh, cr silver uh, chain and uh, sprocket so I don't want to get too crazy anyway so now let's, let's try and start putting this together because this is the more complicated part Anyway, let's go. Oh, and the other thing I was going to say. It says on here, like most things will say when you get any bike part, this crank set, crank set should be installed and serviced by a professional bicycle mechanic. But that's a load of crap, okay? So we're just going to do it ourselves because that's what a true BMXer does. We don't, we don't need no bike mechanic. You know, we fix our own bikes. Come on now. All right, so let's get into it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to take your old cranks off, of course, and um, I think most of us know how to do that. If you don't, then uh, you can look it up for your cranks. Uh, basically, most of them have the same size Allen. I think it's a, uh, what is it? I forget. Six. It's a six millimeter, and that'll do the pinch bolts and this, or if you don't have those, just this. But um, So I'm going to take these off real quick, and if I look scraggly and like I have paint all over me that's because well I'm kind of at work right now so yeah it's just how I look when I'm at work because I do construction all right so shut up just shut up I'm gonna take these cranks off gosh first I gotta get this oh pretty in One crank arm down. And um, if you haven't done this before, you can take off this whole sprocket and crank just without taking the chain off because. You know, it'll just come right off like that, and then you can take the chain off. If you didn't know, I'm sure you would have realized that anyway, but you know, whatever, fine. And then you gotta take the sprocket off, same bolt, or it should be on the same Allen. Take that out. You got your sprocket now. Oh, I need a new sprocket because that one's getting messed up. Okay. So now you got this ugly thing here just sticking out if you have three piece cranks anyway with all this grease on it real messy um basically how you take this off first you want to just take these little spacers off there should be some spacers in there like that big and actually a good thing to do just in case is um because this is your drive side you know the side with your chain so what you want to do is take like a tape measure. Here, I'll grab one real quick. I got a tape pencil. Basically, here, I'll bring it a little closer. Basically, this is what it looks like. If you couldn't see it from over there, I don't know. I'm horrible filming. That's what it'll look like if you have three piece. And see this little guy right here? It slides right off. It's a little spacer. Basically, what's good to do. Oh, put that back on. Slide it back on, or if, or just leave it there. Don't do what I did. And um, take your tape measure, 
because basically this end of this right here is where your sprocket stops, I believe. No, I'm wrong. So <laughs> basically, see how there's like a space in between your sprocket there? That's what you want to measure because you're going to have to use spacers on your next set of cranks on uh, this side to make sure things are right. So what you want to do is take your tape. I want to do this when it's on so you don't have to like do it like this, but I'm going to do it gently and just kind of measure. See like mine just happens to be like right where the tape basically starts, if you can kind of tell. Um, yeah, like right there. So it's basically a quarter inch is what that is. That's what you're seeing. So a quarter inch is what I have to space from the bottom bracket to here before I put my new cranks on. So that's a good thing to know. So you don't have to mess around and find out where straight is for your chain because that's pretty important. So now we know. So now what we're going to do is take this crap back off. Take the spacer off. Another thing you could do, I guess, I didn't even think about it, but you could just measure that little ridge right there. Oh. There we go. Basically, it like forever to focus. Basically, you, you can measure that little ridge right here. And that would give you two, which is, you know, that's probably like an eighth. But then there's a little bit from the middle of your, uh, that sticks out from your um, bottom bracket. So, you know, you could measure that and that pretty much give you it. But you might need a little bit more. But that's probably good if you just measured that. You could even probably use the same one, but you don't really need to, mainly because I'll show you why in a second on these new cranks. So we got this to here. What we want to do is take off this dust cover over here. Screw that little dust cover thing. Come on now. I don't need that. Then you'll see the bearing exposed. As on this side. And actually, see this was a spacer all along, so scratch what I told you earlier because this is a space ore. And it was spacing the space. So that's why it was a quarter inch and not an eighth like that thing. Anyway, now you have the bearings exposed. And the spindle is what that's called. So you take force at this point. You go by force. What do I mean by force? I'll tell you what I mean by force. You take a freaking hammer. Yeah, that's right. Don't worry. You're not going to break anything. You can keep these cranks. But a lot of times, it's just not easy to get this part out. You can't just like tap. Sometimes you can tap with your hand, but not usually. So now you just lightly keep tapping it. And I mean, if you don't care about this, you can just smack it out, but I'm just going to tap it real slow. Okay, so it's all the way out, or all the way in on this side. Not all the way out yet, so now what we need to do, it would be better if you had like some, uh, like, wrench to grab this, but if you don't, then just pull it. The only reason I say wrench is because, you know, you're going to get grease all over your hands like I just did. So, that kind of sucks. But, that's bike life. That is the bike life. So, now you got the spindle out. Last thing to do to get everything disassembled is to take these bearings out in the whole bottom bracket. In fact, so, what we got to do there, I will show you in one second. All right, so now, got you at a different angle, so you can see what's going on, kind of. But, you take a flathead screwdriver, like so, and you take your hammer, and you slowly kind of just try to get this groove, there should be a groove in there, you'll feel it. 
where the, this little like tubing thing is, like I showed you it earlier in that package. And basically you just want to find the groove and gently kind of tap it down. See like, hold on, I'll show you. Basically in there, you can see that, I hope maybe, yeah. You can kind of tell, see how that's like out of place now? That circle, like you can see where the circle fell down. Basically it was just a line like a tube in there and then I just took the screwdriver and found the edge of it and just batted it down a little bit. So now it's down, so therefore there's an edge exposed over there on the other side. So I'm just gonna take the screwdriver and I'm gonna go in and to where I hit the other side, like I'm hitting the bearing over there. And I'm just going to hammer that until the other bearing just pops out. So I'm going to do that right now. And, I mean, if you wanted to keep these bearings, which I'm not, so I don't really care how it comes out. If you are wanting to keep them, basically just try not to hit too hard and kind of like don't just do one side, do like the bottom and then the top, and then maybe the side and the other side. Just kind of like go in a circle pattern until it slowly gets out. Cause it'll it'll come out this way, but it might bend it a little bit and kind of mess up the balls in there. So you don't want to do that if you want to keep it. Alright, so screwdriver wasn't working too well. I can't get it out, so I'm going to try uh, something else. But definitely don't use this if it's getting kind of hard, because it will start to puncture this side part right here. I already did it on the other side a little bit. So if you're planning on keeping these, be really careful. Use something with like a more uh, soft edge, like maybe a piece of wood or um, just like a piece of metal, like I'll show you in a second. This might work, I'm going to try this, this is basically just a ratchet extension and it has like a soft flat edge on it so it's it's going to hit a, a bigger area rather than just like jabbing in with a smaller thing. So we're going to try that, just hit it on this side and see if that works. So this worked a lot better, it just has a little smaller edge, the other one was a little too big, I couldn't really get it in there too good, but I just did kind of every angle, I don't know if you saw me, I kind of went down, left, right, up, all around, and that kind of just evenly eventually pushed out. You have to pretty bang pretty hard, I will say, but I got it out, mine's all tore up because of the screwdriver, see all these like holes in it, that's from me like, like right there, and uh, over there. It's from me just like banging through it with the screwdriver. So don't use a screwdriver if you want to keep these because this is what will happen. So just use this and be careful. Do it slow and eventually it will come out. And uh, I'm just careless because, you know, I'm putting in new ones anyway. So, yeah. Now I'm going to do the next one towards you guys. And also, this little tube in the middle will now come out the other side. So there's your tube, and this is just the faceplate of the bearing. And, um, yep, there it is. Apparently I had a shadow conspiracy one I didn't even know. <laughs> now it's a lot easier because there's a lot more room over here. I don't have to, like, deal with all that tightness. But the bike does move. It's kind of easier if you put your bike on the side, right out the bars and everything.
can see I really I took my time with that one and it came out just fine I mean it just looks bad because it's greasy and kind of dirty but other than that it came out really good it took a while and you had to you definitely hit hard but now this is all you know cleared out so now we can start putting in the new bottom bracket great I can't wait um before we start I'm gonna show you some stuff that'll help to do this just gonna clean this up here So now we got this all nice and cleaned out, which is good. We, we moved locations. But, um, so now what we're going to do is this little ridge right here is where the bearing sits. So I got this grease with my cranks, and we're just going to grease that up, and then grease the outside of the bearing, and then put it in. So I'm going to do that. Got that. And we'll grease the outside of this. It's a weird grease to come like brown, but just gonna rub it along there. So now I got that greased. This is the hard part. So I'm gonna kind of set it in there first. It'll kind of go in there a little bit, but it's pretty tight as you can tell. Not easy to put in. So then, this is what I was talking about earlier when I said you're gonna need something for this. Best to get like a block of wood. This is just a one by block of wood. You could get a two by two, just or something. I mean, a two by piece of wood, and. Uh, just use it to like have a flat surface around the bearing because I've seen if you ever watch Spencer Forsman channel he uh, puts a bottom bracket in one of his videos and he just taps around it with a hammer real gently you can do that but I'm not a professional like him so I'm just gonna do it the safer way but you guys can do it however you want but I'd recommend this because it seems like a safer idea just in case this is my first time ever doing this so. We're just going to like lightly tap in a circle around. I'm just going to lay the bike sideways, it might make it a lot easier. Now I got the bike sideways, we're going to try it like this. So I will say this is not that easy, but when you do it, you want to make sure this gets all the way into where there's no ridge there. It's perfectly flush with the end of this. And just be gentle. It takes a while, but I got this one in, so now we'll do the other side. The other side, basically you got to put this tube in. This should come with your bottom bracket. Also, you'll get a bag with this in there probably and, and some more spacers. But these are for... Basically, you put this in there, that's going to go in the middle, and you kind of just get it to one side to where it's still touching the middle in the middle of that bearing, and then you can kind of tell if it's flush or not with this little ridge here. See that ridge up there that the bearing sits into? Basically, if I can get a better shot at it, like that ridge, that shiny edge, that's what you want it to be even with. So if this isn't even like it's too small but mine's pretty close then uh, you'll have to put 
a spacer in, or more maybe. So that's what those are for. You can put those in if you need them. But I don't really need it. If anything, I think mine's a little too big, so I might have to shave it down. And what you do for that is you just take like a metal shaver, which is like a long rod, and just kind of sand it down. Or I'm going to take sandpaper and just sand it down because it's not much that I need to sand it. So I'm going to do that real quick, but make sure you do that because this will keep your bearings from getting smushed when you put your cranks together. So basically for me, I'm just using like some drywall sandpaper because it's all I have right now. And see, I've already started to kind of sand that. Oh, get to focus. Sand that edge a little bit. And see how it's silver, the paint rubbed off. I've been able to sand a little bit. I'm just taking it and going like this. Just sanding it right off. Just try to make sure your hand's pretty level so it doesn't get unevenly sanded. Even maybe put this on the ground and just rub back and forth. Um, and you'll, you can get it over time. It'll take a while, but you can do it. It's better if you can kind of level your bike. If you uh, don't have a stand or you don't have your bars on them, that's better. I mean, if you don't have a stand, you kind of have to do what I'm doing, just kind of like use your feet. But basically, before you put this bearing in, it's best to try and take this guy and position him over that other circle on that other bearing over there so that metal circle just try to put him right on top of it should fit perfectly over it it's not the easiest take a second but there i got it so now just try to leave him there or as close as you can get it and uh keep your bike there and then tap this other bearing All right, so now, as you can see there, we got that one in flush. So now what's left to do is put those cranks on. That barrel you just want to keep in the middle so those clay cranks will slide right through. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these cranks, well, one of the sides of the crank anyway, this, this main arm, and we're gonna take the sprocket and we're gonna put it on. So if this is the outside of your crank, you want the guard to face out. So you put that on there. And basically, see this part of the crank here? Maybe, yeah. See that there's like a little ridge there? A little pop out? That's meant so when you slide this on, uh, if you have a big enough hole anyway, it should just go right on over and it'll be flush like that so if you have that that's great if not they actually give you a little spacer in the bag and it says it on the instructions um, to use that if you don't have that size hole and it'll pop it out to where you don't have to worry about that so I have mine works out though so that's good and now the spacer it should come with a new sprocket bowl or you can reuse your old one I guess but this should fit the crank better. It's made for the crank. Anyway, I'm gonna put mine where it used to be, which I think is right here. So, I'm gonna line that up with that sprocket hole right here. On one of these smaller holes, any one will work. And then you just, or unless you have a different sprocket, it only has one hole for that for some reason. And then just tighten this in. But it also says this in the instructions, which is good to um, grease this sprocket bolt. Because otherwise, that'll get stuck in there if it, over time with rust and everything. Rust and just season up with no grease. You 
get your six millimeter. Screw in. This is also a good time, uh, if you want, to clean your sprocket. I'm not gonna do like a deep cleaning, but I'm just gonna try to get some of this gunk off a little bit. Now what we wanna do is, like we talked about earlier, is put the spacer on this side to make sure the chain's in the right spot. All right, so I just checked. These are the old spacers, and they're about the size of one of these thick spacers and a small one together. It'll make this distance to where the sprocket would normally be from the bottom bracket. So I'm going to use that. Um, that's fairly common for most BMX bikes. One thicker washer, one thinner one. They give you tons of different sizes, but uh, this will work for mine. So just make sure you measure yours and uh, also like I said that's why you don't really need this piece again if you have this piece because those cranks have that engraved. Right. Now I slid these spacers on as you can see which should suffice. What we also want to grease which I also forgot which is also mentioned in the manual. I want to grease this hex head right here. And this hex head's really nice because it makes it easy to line up your cranks because, you know, you're obviously going to be able to tell when it's off. Whereas if you have like a 48 spine spindle, it's not that easy. But we're going to go ahead and grease. And uh, when you put the sprocket side in, you might want to put it on the chain side, unlike I did for some dumb reason. So I'm just going to do that real quick. <laughs> goes. All right. All right, so now is where these, this little guy comes in handy. It's called a wedge cluster. Basically it has a little rubber band on these metal things and it lets it stretch and uh, go around basically the other crank arm, which is right over here. Basically what happens is this goes in there and uh, it goes around the other side of the spindle. Here, I'll show you. So there's the other spindle size, the hex side. I mean, they're both hex side, but you know what I mean. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put some lube on this, because you know, you should definitely lube everything. That's a lot, all right. So now, rub on this in. You can pretty much just do both sides of this. Let's get a lubey mess going on. Alright, I like the color of this lube, it's like copper looking, it's cool, it's all shiny, it's shiny like, alright so, we got that pretty well lubed, as we put it on like this, with the rubber band facing towards the bottom bracket, actually, yeah, before you do that, sorry. Grab your dust cover, unless you want to use spacers instead, which you can. Because um, you want it to be a certain amount away from the bottom break. Okay. So now what we gotta do is take this cap to the end of the crank and just lube this up, Ooh. lube that up as well as kind of like down here around the uh, flange. 
just gonna do that real quick. Don't be afraid to use a lot of lube, it's good. Pretty good. So now I'll put the other crank arm on. Opposite way. Put the bolt in and tighten it. Basically, for this part, just tighten as much as you can until it's firm, and then that'll be it. Pop off all that excess grease that is everywhere. And then boom, there you go. There's your new Odyssey Thunderbolt cranks. This has been the half two and how to do them. Uh, I might put my pedals on later and include that video, but my phone's about to die right now. So I will do that a little later. I hope hey guys, this is a little later in the day because my phone died earlier. But um, basically I got the pedals off my other cranks. And I'm going to put them on here right now. And earlier in the video, forgive my stupidity, but I forgot to put the uh, chain back on. Normally, when you'd put this side on, you'd put the chain back on so it would be easier. I had to take the wheel off, you know, readjust it so I could put it on the other way around. So don't do that. Don't do a lot of things I did. Um, also, to know your spacings right for the cranks, um, this distance right here from the, the side of the chain stay to the crank like right there between my finger that's uh, supposed to match on both sides and as you can see mine's pretty close if not right on so it's definitely pretty dialed right here you know what I mean super dialed but um so that's what you're looking for when talking spacers so if it's not right you might want to add a spacer or so and uh, also with this thing um, I'm going to like clip in a video right now of what it looked like earlier but basically you just want a spacer here or enough spacers here if you don't have the dust cap or the dust cap doesn't work for your bike to cover up behind where the end of that ridge is that this thing can slip on because there will be like an end of the hexagon and you don't want this uh, little uh, like I forget what they call that like hex thing I don't know it's like the thing with the rubber band you don't want it to be able to slide too far back to where it's like hitting the edge of it so you want to like cover that up with spacers and so the dust cover worked good for that but yep I got the spacers here on this side you can kind of tell over there and then I got that one and everything looks pretty good so I'm just gonna put the pedals on so basically guys for the pedals these are just uh, the Odyssey um, I don't know metal pin pedals with plastic bodies but you just gotta put some uh, grease, lube, whatever it's called, onto, uh, or anti seize, this stuff's called, onto the threads. Lube, get it all in the threads real good. And then just go ahead and make sure you got the right pedal, which. Normally, um, it'll either be marked somewhere on this bolt thing. Mine it says it like right there. It says L. If you can see it, I don't know. But also, the front of your pedal when your bike's right side up should be slanted backwards. So, yeah. So we're gonna put this one on. It's pretty easy. Just find out which way it threads and then thread it on.
And there you have it. I got both my pedals on. The new Odyssey Thunderbolt cranks. Um, I don't give myself all the credit for this video because I definitely watch other YouTube videos. Uh, go to Spencer, Spencer Forsman channel. Check out uh, his bike reviews and stuff. He shows stuff about his cranks. Um, also, there's a video called the Twombolt Cranks. If you look up Odyssey Thunderbolts with Jim Bauer and he's putting them together. Uh, shout out to that video because a lot of the facts in there helped me to uh, learn how to do this. So I'm not taking all the credit. Go check those guys out. Hey guys, um, I'm just doing this little part here because I know that I said at the beginning of this video it's kind of a review. So I just wanted to give an update now. Um, I've ridden my bike a good amount with the cranks and they're pretty awesome. I will say that they're, they're, they feel really good. They're really smooth. Um, I can definitely tell that they're going to last a while. Like, they, they feel really solid. And, um, haven't loosened up, nothing like that. They feel great. So, I definitely recommend them if you're looking for some cranks. You know, I mean, you can get some other cranks for a little bit cheaper, maybe 70 to $50 cheaper or something like that, um, that are pretty good. But at the same time, you're not getting the lifetime warranty. And at the same time you're just not getting the same product I mean Odyssey just makes really good stuff I have a couple of their other products not that I'm saying like oh Odyssey is the best you can't buy any better I'm sure a lot of other companies make great products too but for the price including the lifetime warranty you it's hard to beat as well as they're pretty light I mean I put them in my hand went out earlier when I was before I put them on and um, they are super light. I mean, the site says that they're like one pound, 11.8 ounces. I don't know if that's together or one piece, but even if, that's really, really light. And they feel pretty good. So, if uh, you're looking for some cranks uh, and you don't mind spending a little bit more, like I said, only 178 on Amazon, then I would go with these because... They're really good. You got that lifetime warranty to back you up. And they look cool. They have chrome and they have black. And yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong. Um, I'm thinking these are going to last me a while. If they don't, then, oh well, I got the warranty, so I don't have to worry about it. But I just wanted to like give a little update that I liked them to let you guys know how I felt about them since I've r ridden them on my bike. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, trying to think of anything else I can mention. Oh yeah, and the nice thing is that they're two-piece cranks, and they just go together super easy. I mean, you saw the video, obviously, but the bottom brackets would took me forever. When it came to the cranks, it was just like, put the sprocket bolt in, slide it through, put the other side on, you know, tighten everything up, grease everything, and it was easy. It was super simple. Like, now if I ever have to take it apart, it'll be so easy. Just loosen that one side, take it apart put it back together, tighten the one side. It's it's just simple. So I think that's another good reason that these are nice cranks and I like them because they're just really simple. I like simple stuff because as you can tell, I'm not the greatest with uh, putting bike stuff together or taking it apart. I'm not the most patient. So uh, yeah, I like them and I hope this helped you out in any way. And if it did, that's awesome. Uh, leave a like, comment below, thank you for watching this video, and if you want to see more like this in the future of other stuff on my bike or other parts I buy, just uh, leave a comment below and tell me what you'd like to see or whatever. And uh, thank you guys for watching once again, and I'll see you later.